Good morning, church. And good morning, church. It's me, Bernie Cabrera, and I wanted to say good morning. Church! Good morning, church! Good morning, church! Good morning, church, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. To all of you who are first-time visitors with us today, we are so glad that you are here with us today. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we sure want to invite you to go to our website, check out what we're all about. It's www.wesley-umc.com. There you'll find all sorts of things about our church, and you can head up to the top of the page where it says Contact. If you fill out that form and just send us a note letting us know that you joined us today, we'd love to reach back out, say hello, and send you a little gift for being with us here today. We want to say that uh, obviously things are a little bit different this morning. I am in the sanctuary. I had planned actually to head over again to Wesley West to film from there again today because we're also talking about our distribution ministry here this morning. But as I got over there, Karen Dodlin and her wonderful team were hard at work getting ready for the distribution that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. So it was really great to see them hard at work and I did not want to interrupt their work to record. So I came over here and set up a, a few items that are uh, uh, distributed at our regular monthly distribution. And so I'm just so glad, so thankful for their hard work that they put in, even during those in-between times. Thank you to all of you who were there today. We want to just say that we're going to go ahead and uh, have a wonderful worship service here today. We hope and we pray that it speaks to your heart. We ask today that you would just spend some time in communion with God, that you set aside the things that you're working on, that you set aside the cares and the worries of the world as much as you can. Give them to God today so that your heart and your mind can spend some time with the Father who is in heaven. Let's now turn our attention to the organ prelude, which comes to us from John Stombers, who's joining us again as our guest organist today. Thank you, John, for being here with us. We're so looking forward to this piece. Thank you, John, for that great piece. And now would you please join me in this morning's unison call to worship as it appears on your screen. The Lord knows my name. God who gave me life knows my name. The one for whom time and space bend knows my name. He calls me beloved. 
Congregation, would you please join me in singing our next song? Won't you join me as we sing through the song, Your Love Awakens Me? I'm in my kitchen and I'm working on some gingerbread houses. Do you see so far I've made a church and I've made a house. It's the baby fold festival of trees time now. Can you believe that already? And so I'm getting all kinds of things ready so that I can help the baby fold because this is one of their biggest fundraisers. And as I was making these, especially when I line them up like this and the more and more I make, the more and more it reminds me of Mr. Rogers' Land of Make-Believe. Have you guys ever seen Mr. Rogers? I know now there's a different show where Daniel Tiger, who was on, used to be on Mr. Rogers, um, and I've seen that show too, but Mr. Rogers is a man who was a pastor, and he, he preached to children in a different way than anybody else I've ever known. But one of the things I kind of like about Mr. Rogers is how kind he was, how helpful he was to children. And I was reading a book about him, and it was saying that his mother used to say, whenever you're in trouble, go find the helpers. And we've been talking about lately a lot about neighboring and about being helpful to our neighbors. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of my neighbors that I have 
some things I have learned lately about my neighbors. One of my neighbors, and I love this story. See this thing right here? This is not something you've probably ever seen before. It's a little bit, I've never seen one before. It's called a soap sack. And one of my friends, one of my neighbors, Becky, makes these. And what's it smells really good. It's a bar of soap. And then she, she knitted this thing around the bar of soap. And it's so cool because you could take it in your bath or in your shower. And this is kind of like the washcloth. And you just, and the soap kind of just goes all over. And you just have to use this one thing. But the cool part about it is, do you know my neighbor Becky, she's been making these for a couple of years and she makes them for our church. Now this friend Becky doesn't go to our church and I barely knew her before we were talking about being good neighbors lately. And I found out that she's been making these for our church for our distribution to hand out. Isn't that cool? So I learned something great about that neighbor. And another neighbor of mine, another neighbor, she bought a whole bunch of candy canes so that I could get our advent bags ready and send you all got send you guys mice with candy canes in them. So I hope your family's gonna pick out your come to church and pick up your advent bags because they have some mice and I'm going to be using those mice in our children's messages coming up and there's all kinds of other fun stuff for you to do through the Christmas season and especially Christmas week with your neighbors so make sure you go by church and pick up an advent bag for your family and if you could pick some up for your neighbors that would be awesome too and I have one other neighbor that I learned something about that I wanted to tell you my church neighbor her name is Donna she liked my do nothing dolls so much that she asked if she could make them for all of her neighbors. She lives at Luther Oaks and she wanted to make some for her neighbors. Isn't that cool? I love how I have great neighbors and the more and more I find out about them, the more and more I find out how great they are. So you might want to get to know your neighbors and see what you can do to help them. And remember what Mr. Rogers mother said? Look for the helpers. I'm looking around and I'm finding so many helpers that live around me. Would you pray with me? Thank you, God, for the helpers in my neighborhood. Thank you for the helpers in my church. Thank you for all the people around us who help each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, guys. See you soon.
Thank you, Bells of Wesley, for that incredibly beautiful and familiar piece. We are so grateful to each and every one of you who continue to share your time and your talents with us so that we can praise God with these wonderful pieces of music from the comfort of our own homes. Let's turn our hearts and our minds now to hearing the word proclaimed. And you know, I think I have to admit something. I think I sometimes don't always pay attention the way I should. Now, of course, not to that, that beautiful piece of music that we just heard. That was awesome. Instead, I'm talking about something else, uh, other times that I don't pay attention as well as I should. Here's an example. A while back, the refrigerator at the parsonage went kaput. And so we went through the process of having a new one installed. But during the installation, the water line for the ice maker had to be changed out from an older copper line to a newer stainless steel connection. The update has, has proven better than I expected because now the water just comes gushing out of the fridge door so much faster than it used to. So much so that one day I was standing at the refrigerator filling up a water bottle and I was staring off into space for quite some time like I used to be able to do when water began pouring out of the bottle down the side of my hand and down the side of the refrigerator. I'm lucky I think that my hand was there to feel the running water or I'm sure I would have ended up with quite the puddle. Have you ever done something silly like this? I think most of us have. It's probably more common at the stovetop when we've got boiling over water when we're cooking dinner. But it's easy to do, to not pay attention and allow things to overflow. But what if I told you that God does this every single day? But for God, it's not accidental. No, God allows, even desires, that what he spills out to overflow all over the place. I'm talking, of course, about the way that God loves. You see, God's love is overly abundant. Not only does God not try to contain his love, but he actually encourages us to spread it as far and wide as possible by sharing it with one another. For example, when Paul wrote his letter to the Thessalonian church, he encouraged them with these words. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Now, I like to think that Paul didn't just stumble upon this idea of overflowing love. In fact, I'm confident that he didn't because Paul was a learned Jewish man who would have known today's scripture passage pretty darn well, if not by heart since it bears the essence of the law that Paul was so zealous about. But that's a story for another day. For now, let's just say that Paul would have likely known today's passage well. And what's in it is nothing short of an overly abundant, outpouring, overflowing kind of love. Let's hear now together this morning's reading, which comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 through 22. And it's going to come to us from the New Revised Standard Version. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his decrees that I am commanding you today for your own well-being. Although heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth with all that is in it, yet the Lord set his heart in love on your ancestors alone and chose you, their descendants after them, out of all of the peoples as it is today. Circumcise then the foreskin of your heart and do not be stubborn any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast and by his name you shall swear. 
He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt, 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars are in the heavens. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord require of you? That can be a dangerous question, can't it? Because one never knows what the answer will turn out to be. But of course, this morning's scripture passage provides us an answer, at least according to what is known as Mosaic Law. Verse 12 begins a a series of brief descriptors of what God requires of his people. And they appear to be based on the Ten Commandments that Moses receives from God in the previous 11 verses. They include fearing the Lord, walking in the ways of the Lord, loving the Lord, serving the Lord with your whole heart and your soul, and keeping the Lord's commandments. Now, one could easily stop reading our passage right here, satisfied that they've discovered the answer to the question, what does the Lord God require of you? And while I'd say that they are technically correct, I'm convinced that it's in reading on that the faithful receive a more nuanced answer and frankly an answer that I find to be far more enticing and satisfying for the soul. Let me explain. Verses 14 and 15 go on to say that even though God is the ruler of heaven and earth and can choose for himself whatever or whomever he wants, for some reason he has chosen the people of Israel to love them deeply. Now, before we get too far into this passage this morning, let me just remind us that it is by extension, through belief in Jesus the Christ, that you and I are included in this passionate love of God's. We are God's beloved as well. And so here we, the beloved, are in the middle of this morning's passage that in my Bible has a heading of the essence of the law. And we come across verses 14 and 15 that talk about God's love for us. For me, this is a striking change in tone. To go from talking about something as rigid as law to talking about something as emotional, as feeling-oriented, as love. But I don't think this was done by accident, you see. For the Hebrew word for love that this passage uses is ahava, or ahav. Ahava is the type of love in Hebrew that is ascribed to love between persons. It can be familial love. It can be sexual love. It can be love for God. And it can even be love for things like food or nature. It's an all-encompassing type of love, and it's a deep-rooted type of love. But perhaps most importantly, it's a love that gives. You see, ahava shares a root word with yahav, another Hebrew word. And yahav means to give. Now, I have to ask you, Do you find it surprising that these two words share a root word? I sure don't. I mean, what is more giving than true love? Lovers give each other gifts all of the time. Friends give each other the gift of their time and company. Parents give to their children all that they have. God loves us by giving us our very lives. Even affection is a gift. That is given. And so I think the word ahava appears a total of four times in this morning's passage alone for the purpose of emphasizing the importance of love in obeying God's law. As we keep on reading this morning, we come across verses 17 through 19, which I'd like to read again. See if you, though, can catch the word ahava, well, the English word love, and the context in which, it, in which it's used. Verses 17 through 19. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, 
the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were once strangers in the land of Egypt. Did you catch it? Ahava is used twice in these verses, and both times it's used in the context of loving the stranger. Now, I find it amazing that our God loves, not even just likes us. The intimacy implied there is extraordinary. God deeply cares, deeply cherishes you and I. But it doesn't stop with just caring, does it? If we remember, Ahava reveals that in loving us, God also gives to us. And so in verse 18, we find just how extraordinary God's love actually is. It says that God executes justice for the orphan and the widow and loves the strangers, providing for them everything, including food and clothing. Now, congregation, this is extraordinary love. You see, by indicating that strangers or foreigners living among them were loved by God as well, and therefore that they, God's people, should also love them, the author of this passage is arguing that God's laws of fear, obedience, and service to the Lord pale in comparison, pale in importance to God's law of love for the Lord and God's people. Do you remember me earlier saying that God's love has been extended to us by association, by our belief in Jesus Christ? Well, ancient Israel was very concerned with who was in and who was out, who belonged to the faith and who didn't. But in some ways, this passage is a reminder to ancient Israel that God's love is big enough for all people, everywhere. And thereby, it's a reminder to us as well. It's clear here that the author is saying just how all-encompassing God's love actually is. And that if God has room enough in his heart for the strangers, the, the people on the edge of society, so should those who claim to follow him. So should we. Congregation, I think this is where I need to pause. And I need to ask us, does Wesley Church love like that? Ahava is an extension of God's love for people. It's love that is shared. It's love that goes out of its way to be given away. It's love that is so big that it dares to say, even though I don't know you, I can promise that I will care for you. I mentioned last week that Wesley Church is fast approaching the third anniversary of this ministry, the Wesley Distribution Ministry, our paper goods ministry. But did I mention just how incredibly glad I am to be one of the pastors who serve a congregation that does its best to live out the meaning of Ahava each and every single day. Church, through this ministry, you are living out the love of God. Each and every month, strangers, people we don't yet know, come through the drive-up lanes of our facility and they seek assistance. So I pray that while they're here, they receive not only the paper goods that they need, but also a sense that someone loves them. You see, we're not just in the business of giving away only toilet paper, but we're also in the business of giving away our love. We're about the business of Ahava. Friends, I hope that if you have not yet had a chance to participate in our Neighbors Helping Neighbors Paper Goods Drive, that you will stop by Wesley West today and you will pick up some paper bags that are in the bin just outside of the doorway. It's really not too late 
if you hand them out today or tomorrow to invite your neighbors to participate. It's a great way to invite our community to share their love with each other as well. But more than that, I hope as we wrap up this two-week series that we've called The Needs of Our Neighbors, that you've rediscovered a passion for loving and serving others. There's a reason we get that joyful feeling when we serve, when we give. And I think that's just the very Spirit of God which dwells in each and every one of us believers, stirring with excitement over an expression of love between people whom he created for that very purpose. Congregation, as we finish out this Neighbors Helping Neighbors Drive this week, don't forget to pick up this Wednesday the bags that you've already handed out to your neighbors if you've done so. And then bring them back to Wesley West anytime between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. Wednesday evening. We'll have a team of volunteers there to collect any donations as you drop them by. Thanks so much for being love to a world that so needs to hear just how much God does, in fact, love it. Let's sing together now. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds fully to God as we join together in a time of prayer. Would you bow with me now as we lift our joys and the concerns of our hearts heavenward? Gracious and almighty God, we thank you for this church, Wesley United Methodist Church. God, we come together now from, from our different corners of this community and maybe even from uh, farther away than that. But God, we know that you are with us wherever we are at. and You have joined us together by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray today for one another in our need. And God, we do know that there is need amongst our brothers and sisters. God, we know that there are people who are sick today. And so we pray for their healing. We pray for those who have recently lost loved ones and who are grieving this day. 
God, we pray today for those whose lives are in turmoil because of some situation, whether it be economic or relational or work-related or something else. God, we know that you are a God who seeks to heal and to comfort. And so today we pray for those things, for people who are hurting. And God, we also pray for our brothers and sisters not only in our own community, but around the world who have need this day. God, since the beginning of this pandemic, things have been hard for many folks. The economy has taken a, a hit and, and many people have lost jobs. And for those who are hurting, especially today, because they have some need, whether it be food or shelter or something else, God, we pray for them in their need. And God, we lift up to you today all of our prayers of thanksgiving. God, upon each of our hearts this morning is something for which we have to be thankful for. And God, indeed, you are a God who loves to give. And so we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, for shelter, for food on our tables, for the clothes on our back, and more. God, we give you a resounding thank you. Thank you for your great blessings, which all stem from a place of love. God, we also pray today specifically for the election in this country. And God, we pray that, that the will of the people would be heard, and that the acknowledgement of the will of the people would come soon from the White House. God, we pray for the will of the people to prevail in this land. We pray for justice and for reconciliation amongst people who are divided. God, we are a divided country, and unity doesn't come from anywhere but from you. And so we pray today that we would focus our eyes on you as a country, that you would help us to not only get past this election, but to get past those things that divide us as a country, to unite together, to have productive conversation, to seek out wisdom and discernment wherever we can, to come to solutions that all sides can agree to. God, we pray too, for our world as it stands in need, yet even today. God, this, this COVID-19 has, has changed our world. It's had such an impact on who we are, God. And so today we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are sick because of this. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the medical teams who are working tirelessly to keep these people healthy and to get them better. God, we pray for all of those who we've dubbed essential workers during these last several months. We pray for their safety as well. We pray for our safety, safety of our families and friends, for the world over as we seek a solution to this. God, give us wisdom. Give us the ability to overcome this pandemic so that we can get back to some sense of normalcy, but also, Lord, so that no more get hurt. God, we know all of these things are just a drop in the bucket as far as the needs of our world go. So we lift one another up yet again in our need. And we pray for each other this morning. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
A charge to keep I have. These are such fitting words for opening a time of talking about tithes and offerings for God. God calls all of us to be generous givers regularly, to give to the charge of making disciples, a charge that God has called each and every single one of us to. Thank you to everyone who continues to be faithful in their giving to God through Wesley United Methodist Church. We are grateful for your continued financial support of the ministries of this congregation. And as of the recording of this video, the church has received 156 commitment cards for the next year, totaling an amount of $715,056. Of course, that means we're well on our way to fulfilling the needs of next year's budget, but many commitments are still needed to make it fully there. So if you've received a commitment card in the mail and you've not yet returned yours, would you please consider praying about how God is calling you to give through Wesley United Methodist Church in the coming year? And then, once you've settled on an amount that sits well with your soul, would you please mail it back to the church office? You can also securely submit a commitment card online by going to www.wesley-umc.com and looking for the 2021 commitment card link that sits on the homepage. Also, keep an eye out this next week for an update letter from James Ingold, the chair of the finance committee here at the church. We just wanna keep everyone informed on the status of our fall financial drive. As for today's offering, you may go to www.wesley-umc.com give to find out all about the ways you can make a financial contribution today, including right there on the website. Let's now offer up a prayer, thanking God for the offering that we'll collect today. Gracious God, who continues to bless us so abundantly, we pray for your continued provision for those around the world who are in need this day. We thank you, God, for all with which you have blessed us, and we ask that you'd use us to help wherever we see need. Help us to be generous wherever we can, whenever we can. Lord, we thank you for the offering that we'll collect today as a congregation, and help us to use it in ways that bring you honor and to serve those who have need. We pray, God, for your continued blessing upon our church, and we ask all of these things in the name of our Lord Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you now join me in singing our next song?
Thanks so much for joining Wesley United Methodist Church for online worship this week. We are sure glad that you were able to be here with us, and we hope that you'll join us again sometime soon. Before we go, we have just a few announcements that we'd like to share with you about upcoming events here at Wesley Church this week. First, this past Wednesday's Paint the Town Wesley event was a success with 17 gingerbread houses and maybe even a few more going out to be auctioned off at the Baby Folds Festival of Trees this year. Thank you to everyone who is using their creativity to help the Baby Fold this season. And don't forget about this Wednesday's Paint the Town Wesley event, the Neighbors Helping Neighbors Paper Goods Drive at Wesley West. Pick up the paper bags that have been filled with paper goods from your neighbors' homes and then drop them off by Wesley West from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday. We hope to help as many of our neighbors as we can. And lastly, join us for a Thanksgiving worship service, which will be posted here on YouTube at 9 a.m. next Sunday. Retired United Methodist pastor Paul Unger will bring us his sermon titled, Thanksgiving as Thanks Living. Thanks again for joining us for worship, and now receive this benediction. May God give you grace and peace this next week. May God sustain you for the work that is ahead. And may God give you passion for serving others wherever you go. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next time, church. Have a great week.